Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to tonight's City Council meeting and Committee of the Whole meeting. Tonight's City Council meeting is called to order. I ask our City Administrator, Ms. Dawkins, to please take the roll call. Bruno. He's there. Alderman Bruno. And he's gone. We'll come back. Burghardt. Ruby. Okay. Ruby here. Thank you. Caven. Here. Kilberg. Over here. Kasarog. Here. Maladra. Marks. Marks here. McGowan. Here. Swanson. Here. Bruno. Bruno here. Everyone is joining us tonight, save for Alderman Maladra, who had a last-minute work conflict. Ladies and gentlemen, the meeting tonight is being conducted semi-virtually in compliance with the governor's executive orders limiting in-person gatherings to the lesser of 50 people or 50% of overall room capacity under Phase 4. For the City of Geneva Council Chamber, this provides for a maximum of 29 individuals who may attend in person. Individuals, excuse me, as such, you will note that many of the aldermen are attending virtually and the remainder are here in the chamber. Staff members are also participating virtually and in person. As a requirement of the Open Meetings Act, I am required to be physically present at the meeting location. This meeting may be viewed and live streamed on YouTube or the public access channel on AT&T, which is channel 99, or Comcast, which is channel 10, or by accessing the meeting directly through the link provided on the agenda. In addition, public comments may be submitted anytime during this meeting by emailing publiccomment at geneva.il.us. Please note that comments received during the meeting will be acknowledged and placed into the official record of the meeting, but will not be read aloud during the meeting. Any questions or comments regarding those procedures? We always begin our city council meetings with the Pledge of Allegiance, and I would like to invite our veteran police officer, Officer Bolger, to please lead us in the pledge. <laughs> Thank you, officer. We have an exciting agenda tonight, folks. We are swearing in three officers. One officer, well, I, I guess celebratory swearing in, because one officer has been with us actually for a year. But we weren't able to do so because of the pandemic. So, per the agenda, I'd like to invite Police Officer Matthew R. Adam to the podium. Matthew Robert Adam. You prefer to be called Matt? Yes. Yes, sir. It says right here, likes to be called Matt. Jeff and Megan are with you? They are. Mom and Dad? Parents. Hi, Mom and Dad. Hello. They declined my offer for coffee. <laughs> a little late, I guess. You haven't been to a council meeting in a while, have you? I guess not, no. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, Griff, Jack, and Kaylee. Yes. Anyone else with you tonight? No, just my parents okay, tonight. Cool. Are you the youngest? I'm the oldest. You're the oldest? Yes, I am. <laughs> Good Lord. What are Griff, Jack, and Kaylee up to? Um, at home. Probably. Yeah? Yeah. Playing Xbox more than likely. Are they old enough to be on their own? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I believe so. 21 and two of them are 16, so I think well, they could I be on their own. Don't <laughs> see any downside to that at all. Yeah. Okay, Matt. 
According to this, you were born in Arlington Heights. I was. Which hospital? <laughs> Northwest Community. Northwest Community. That's really grown over the years, hasn't it? Uh, yeah. Unbelievable. You know, I used to live in Arlington Heights. You did? When I was a young man, I lived in the Greenbrier subdivision. Yeah, my dad grew up in Arlington Heights. So. Is that right? Yep. Northgate. Wow, no kidding. Yeah, I lived off of Kennecott. Yep. Kennecott and Greenbrier, just off of Rand Road. So yeah. Oh, my God. Did you get into as much trouble as I did, sir? No. <laughs> uh, you answer that awful quickly. <laughs> Raised in Huntley. Yes. Mo yeah, almost my entire life. Is that right? Yeah. So after birth, you said, get the heck out of Arlington Heights and head Yeah, to well, I went to uh, South Elgin until my uh, ninth month on Earth. And then uh, we went to, uh, well, I guess it was Lake in the Hills, but it was right on the uh, border of Huntley and Lake in the Hills. So I went to Huntley schools. And then, wow. So basically my entire life has been spent So there. Huntley High School. Yes. What is the nickname of Huntley High School? The Red Raiders. The Red Raiders. Yeah. Wow. See, I'm wearing my alma mater, Geneva Vikings. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So what did you do during high school besides just be cool? Uh, well, other than being cool, I was a police explorer <laughs> for uh, three years. Oh, you were? Yeah, but I was with the uh, city of Elgin where my father was a police officer. Oh, so. sir, I didn't know you were a police officer. He's a retired police officer. Wow. He retired last January after 27 years. Oh, my God. Thank you for your service. And then uh, uh, I did that. Uh, played a lot of video games, probably too many. It uh, cut into my schoolwork sometimes. Uh, played baseball as well, uh, in-house oh. ball. So. What position? Yeah, wherever. In baseball? <laughs> yeah, it was in-house ball, so it wasn't really like too competitive, but okay, got it. mostly shortstop or uh, left field. Got it. Left, so you got a good arm? Uh, sort of, yeah. Are you, are you a left or right? I'm a righty. Righty? Yeah. And what was, uh, two questions, what was your batting average during your baseball career? Uh, not good. And, uh, not I'm good. Assuming you that, might that's why I was playing in-house in high school, because it wasn't the greatest. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to assume that your question, your answer is going to be similar. What was your GPA? Uh, yes, uh, I don't know exactly, but it wasn't bad. It wasn't as bad as my guy, batting average. That's <laughs> it, was, it was better, a lot better, I'd say. You want me to rewind the tape? You can answer that again? <laughs> it was a lot better than my batting average. <laughs> McHenry County College. Yes. Uh, just going part-time. I was going full-time, uh, and I'm just doing uh, a few classes here and there right now. Yeah. Smart move, though, isn't mm -hmm. it? Yep. I, uh, when I got out of the military, I just started, I started going there to finish, or start my, and finish my degree. So. Wow. Because it says here, United States Navy, Master at Arms. Yes, that's the uh, Navy's title for our military police. So I was a military police in uh, Suda Bay, Greece, for a year. I was a, it was more gate standing there. No kidding. And then uh, when I was in uh, Guantanamo Bay, I was on the Naval Station side, and it was wow. uh, Thank you for strictly your law enforcement. So, so uh, memorable? Yes. Yes, it was. Especially Gitmo. There was a lot of uh, good experiences there. I Got to do a lot of stuff. Now, if you don't mind me saying, you're a young man, uh, obviously a very young man, <laughs> and you're overseas. You're a cop in the Navy, for all practical purposes. Yes. What's the most memorable experience there, there's a lot um honestly just the people i met the experience i got yeah. i'd say is uh definitely the thing i hold dearest to me from that That's but really uh, I, I did see a lot of things i never thought i'd see if i hadn't gone into the service wow so. that's really impressive yeah. really impressive now it says here um you were a park and control officer in elgin yes is that similar to the work in the Navy, or is that? No, uh, it was, I as a that. I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was writing tickets. I was just doing tickets. So you were stuff. the most favorite guy in Elgin. Oh, yes. They all loved They all loved the PCOs over there. Yes. Did they give you grief because Dad was a uh, veteran officer? Honestly, I don't think I ever had any experience over there where they put two and two together that I was ah. the son of uh, Jeffrey Adam. But <laughs> all, the, all the officers did, but the, the people of the city, I don't know if they uh, Elgin's a beautiful community. It's a, it's a nice big town, yeah. Good, good police department. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. Now, according to my cheat sheet here, Matt, your hobbies include sports. Yes. Outdoor activities, such as? Uh, we have land up north, so my dad and I and my brothers go up there all the time. So we're, we do everything up there that you could think of. But, uh, I'm thinking of a lot of things. Yeah, you know, fire. <laughs> uh, we pretend like we're lumberjacks. Um, <laughs> but, it's, yeah, it's a good time. I, I like you realize that. that when you just said we pretend like we're lumberjacks, that is going to cascade off the walls in the police department tomorrow? Yeah, yeah. Well, we like to cut down trees and stuff like that. That's what I meant. <laughs> Do you have a nickname, Matt? 
Matt. Just Matt. Just Matt. <laughs> yeah, never really had a nickname. Yeah, Lumberjack yeah, Matt. Apparently it? Lumberjack <laughs> Matt. Lumber Matt. <laughs> What's your favorite video game? It says you're an avid video game player. Yeah, um, play a game called Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. Oh, God, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm sure you're on there often, sir. Uh, no, it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's an online game I play. So when you play that game, you're playing with people around the world? Uh, yeah, I mean, I play with my brother a lot, but then I've met a bunch of guys from that game all over the country. Hold on now, which brother is it? Uh, Griff. Griff, yeah. yeah. Uh, Griff sounds like he'd be tough in video games. Uh, he is. He's, he's hardcore when it comes to video games. And he's the 21-year-old? Yes. <laughs> and, of course, collecting. What do you like to collect? Uh, yeah, uh, I consider myself a dork. I uh, collect a lot of Star Wars memorabilia. Oh, and, you do? Uh, yes. Uh, I have a big collection of uh, Star Wars action figures that uh, I display, so I like to do that. I collect comics as well. Let me get this straight. Lumberjacking and Star Wars. Okay, got it. I guess uh, it's, it's two, tough day two, tomorrow, two opposite ends of the uh, hobby spectrum. Yeah, it's going to uh, be a long day after yeah. Troll. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Alderman McGowan was the uh, understudy for Princess Leia. Oh, really? <laughs> Chewbacca, but... Chewbacca. History. You have a passion for history. I do. What genre? Uh, I like ancient history, Roman, Greek era. Really? Yeah, uh, specifically Roman Empire, but I like, you know, Roman Republic and stuff like that. I like World War II history as well. Do you uh, follow the Stoics from Greek history? I, Greek, not as much, mostly Roman, but I like to learn about Greece. See, see, I put more of my time into Roman, but sometimes I make time for Greek history. But I, I know Greek and Roman history go side by side together. So I'm, That's pretty cool. And World I'm, War II. Yes. World Why War II? World War II? Uh, I, my grandpa was, was always studying it, and then my dad, so they got me into it, and I've always been, uh, it always fascinated me. That's really neat. Is there anything else you'd like to share with us? Um, no. Anything our, at all? Why? I mean, I can, I can surmise as to why, but in your own words, for those tuning in, why do you want to be a police officer? I've wanted to be a police officer since I was a kid. Um, Is that right? I mean, I, you know, I grew up around it with my father being sure. a police officer. Uh, and then I, I knew a bunch of police officers at, uh, when I was a kid, and I always thought it was just a very interesting uh, uh, thing. And then I became a police explorer, and that really drove me to want to do it because I got to see it firsthand. You know, I right. went on ride-alongs all the time. Uh, and that's why I went into the, uh, the service as a military police because I wanted to uh, – uh, learn more about it, but then when I got out, I wanted to be able to translate that into my uh, uh, career in the civilian. And forgive me for not knowing this, but when you, joined the, when you joined the Navy, you joined with the specific interest of being a master at arms. Correct. When, uh, b before boot camp, we went up to, I went up to MEPS in uh, the military entrance. Uh, I can't think of what exactly, but it's where you, uh, you know, uh, swear in, and that's where you pick your, uh, your job. So. Well, so you literally just choose what you want to do. Yeah, the, you could request, but you might not get what you want. Okay. It, it's basically what they have openings for, so I got lucky with that being open. And where was boot camp? Yeah, boot camp was in uh, Great Lakes. Oh, Illinois. it was just close yeah. to home. Yes. Nice. Well, Matt, we're delighted to have you. I'm delighted to be here. I couldn't be more appreciative for this opportunity. It's very exciting. Now, are you going to be commuting from Huntley to here? Uh, for the time being. Oh, so, yeah. There's no speed limit, so what the <laughs> It's like... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for the time being, I will be commuting from Huntley. That's very cool, man. Anything else? The floor is yours. Uh, I you know, basically answered everything. Uh, you know, I made a fool of myself with that one comment. But, no, uh, not at all. Uh, otherwise, no, I think I got it. Oh, Lumberjack, Matt. It's all yeah. good, man. It's like, if you'd like to invite whomever you wish to join you, we'd be I'm honored good. to perform the administration of the oath. Thank <laughs> you. 
I, Matthew R. M. I, Matthew R. M. Having been appointed to the position of police officer, having been appointed to the position of police officer, in the city of Geneva, county of Kane, aforesaid, in the city of Geneva, county of Kane, aforesaid, do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear, that I will support the Constitution of the United States, I will support the Constitution of the United States, the Constitution of the State of Illinois, the Constitution of the State of Illinois, the Geneva Code of Ordinances, Geneva Code of Ordinances, and that I will faithfully discharge the duties of the patrol officer. I will faithfully discharge the duties of the patrol officer according to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations, Thank you. Thank you. Great. And then I need your signature, please. To make it official. Just sign right here for me. Okay, Hunter. I'm going to change out the masks so I can be more, a little bit more articulate. Let's see here. How are you, sir? I'm good. Welcome. Thank you. You've got a whole slew of folks joining you tonight. Uh, just a couple, yeah. Would you like to introduce your guests? Uh, it's my dad, mom, Stephen Stacy, and my girlfriend, Star. Star, how are you? Good, how are you? Villanueva. Yes. There's a wonderful family in Geneva named Villanueva. Oh, okay. A wonderful family, so. Any relation, do you think? No. Hunter Arno. Yes. Winterstein. Arno. Tell me about your middle name. Uh, it's an old German name that's been in our family for a long time. What, what's that mean? I'm not sure exactly what it means, but I know my dad has the same middle name and his grandfather has, that was his first name. Is so. that right? Yes. That's really cool. Yep. That's really cool. And you, you prefer to be called Hunter? Yes. Hunter and Lumberjack. That's going to be... <laughs> Star, again, welcome. Thank you. Let's see here. Steve and Stacy, Mom and Dad. I just love that name, Arno. It's so cool. Thank you. You have a brother, Jacob. Yes. Moreau's not here tonight. No, he's in, uh, he lives down in southern Illinois, so he's he... testing down there. So. Oh, is that right, to be yeah. a police officer? Yes. No kidding. Yeah. Dad, were you a police officer? He was. Where? 25 years at Bartlett. No kidding. Yeah. Our director of public works lives in Bartlett. Uh, your director here? Uh, yes, and our former director is now the director of public works in Bartlett. Uh, Dan Dinges. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know him very well. And my, my niece and her husband live in Bartlett, too. Really cool. Nice to it's a beautiful community. Other than Geneva. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, well said. <laughs> <laughs> You'd have midnights for five years. That's okay. I like the night shift. You probably will anyways, all right? So, yeah. St. Charles, Illinois? Yes. Are you a North Star or a Saint? I'm not sure. <laughs> well, it says here you were born and raised in St. Charles, huh? Yes. But you didn't go there. You went to Burlington Central High School. I did. I was right in the, right in the edge were... of St. Charles, in oh, the cornfield oh. side. Yeah, you were way out there, man. Yeah. That's pretty cool. That's a different world out there, isn't it? It's nicer out there, I think. Yeah, I, yeah it's charming. And Burlington Central is a cool school. It is. And right in the cornfields. Yeah, it's amazing. You have a nice baseball diamond, though. We do, yes. Yes. And uh, what's the nickname of Burlington Central? Uh, I just know we're the Rockets, so. The Rockets? Yes. Cool. And during your high school career, Hunter, what did you do besides academics? Uh, mostly just did football. I worked as much as I could, so. Where did you work? Uh, I worked at Jewel for a year. I was a cashier there. I worked at a Chinese restaurant for a little bit. No kidding. Like a, a starting job, so. Yeah. yeah. Well, you'll have to visit Jen Ho here in Geneva. Okay. It's a Chinese restaurant in East State Street. I worked there in high school. Yeah. Chief, anything? Football, what position? Receiver. Receiver, what number? 12. Wait a minute. You wore number 12 when you were the receiver? Yes. Really? Yeah. Is that your favorite number? 
I would say so, yeah. Yeah. And how did you do it? Uh, not so great. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? I just wasn't the best. I was a, I was like 100 pounds in high school, so Isn't that I was a little guy. All, yeah. It's amazing how we all grow afterward. We could have been somebody. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's what I think. Maybe even a lumberjack. I could have been, yeah. <laughs> now, it says here your hobbies include weightlifting. Yep. What kind, just good old-fashioned yep. free weights? Me and my dad go pretty much every day, so. Well, you do. Where do you go? We go to the basement gym in St. Charles. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's pretty, that's pretty hardcore. Yeah, we like to do that, yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's a, is it a step up from, like, the CrossFit gig? Uh, CrossFit's not that great. We don't, we don't oh. mess with that. <laughs> you do know who is a member of CrossFit on the police department, don't you? I do not. You're going you're gonna to meet him tomorrow. I'm sure. Yeah. I, I believe roll calls at, what, four? That's fine. And wait till you see the size of this officer who you just dissed. Oh. <laughs> fishing. Yes. What kind of fishing? Uh, just like bass fishing, stuff like that. On the rivers or? We have some property in southern Illinois that has uh, uh, some ponds on it that we fish on. So. Where, uh, far south or like Carbondale? Uh, if you know where Effingham is. Of course. Yeah, it's right outside Effingham. So. Oh, neat. Wow. And of course, shooting. Yes, of course. Now, I'm familiar with the sport of shooting. You may or may not be aware that we had a gentleman in town, probably a couple years younger than you, who is actually a national champion in marksmanship. Are you a marksman as well? I'd like to say I am, yes. Is that right? Yes. What kind of uh, caliber? Well, I've just been trained with my dad since I was, could shoot, so everything that, you know, ARs and pistols, stuff like that. So. Interesting. And there's a, there's a real art and science to that. I believe there is, yes. Yeah, absolutely. So obviously, do you fire when your marksmanship is at its best in between heartbeats, or do you? I would say yes. Do you? Yeah. Because I know the biathletes do that. Yes. Yeah, you knew that because you're a biathlete. Of course, yes. Yeah, I knew exactly. that. <laughs> what is biathlete, Hunter? I'm not sure. I know it's a two-sport athlete probably. Very good. <laughs> Very good. Very good. It's a good guess. Yeah, it's actually weightlifting and fishing. Yes. <laughs> I'm okay with that, yeah. You're okay with that? Yeah. Your dad's the reigning world champion. Yeah, that's where I learned it from. I bet, man. That's really cool. United States Army Military Police. Yes. Thank you for your service. You're welcome. Um, I asked your, your colleague earlier, you joined the Army and specifically wanted to be military police? Or? Yes. For the Army, you get more of an exact uh, what job you want. And uh, you picked the, I picked it out a year before I even left. I signed at 17. And then when I turned 18 right away, I went to basic for military police. So. And where did you go to basic training? Uh, Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri. No kidding. Yeah. And then where did you serve? Most of my time was in uh, El Paso, Texas. And then I went to Germany for nine months and Korea for a year. Really? Yes. Germany is a beautiful base. It was awesome there, yes. Isn't that a great country, too? It is. Oh, my God. And did you look up the family? I tried to a little bit, but it was kind of difficult. Uh, we were busy so much, I didn't have much travel time. So. Sure. Wow. And Korea, how did you enjoy that experience? Uh, it was okay. <laughs> yeah. So, and, and I was you, happy to come back to the States. Is that right? It's just yeah. such a different culture. It's very different. I didn't hate it. It was just not for me, I guess. And you were there for a year? Yes. Forgive me for asking, but how do you stay in touch with either Miss Villanueva or your parents or whomever from being so far away? Well, there's a big time difference, so you kind of, you know, you have to stay up late or early mornings is when you get your time to call or whatever, yeah. and uh, just stuff like that. You know, you get used to the, the time difference. You get used to it after a week or two, so. Interesting. Yeah. And, of course, flying over there, you were in a cargo plane or no? Just a regular uh, civilian plane, yes. Oh, you did? Okay. Yeah. And you knew then, and you knew way before being a police officer what you wanted to do? Yeah. Since I could ever remember, it's all I've wanted to do. Wow, that's really cool. What else should we know about you, sir? Why do you? Why did you? Why do you? And what's your message to those tuning in? I've always had a passion for serving and protecting people. That's a big reason I went to the military. Uh, it's, I feel like it's something that a lot of people should experience and should be a part of. And this is, for me, was the next step that That's I still get to do that with a community that I can be more direct with, I guess, if that makes sense. You know, I have friends who live in Germany and elsewhere. And of course, conscription is part of their life. You served two years in the military, irrespective. Right. 
Yes. Uh, and a lot of them comment that it's an extraordinarily valuable experience. It, it launches you in all sorts of different directions. So It does. That's Korea great. does the same thing, too. Yeah, no question about it. That's really neat. Really neat. Any questions or comments from the council for this young man? Anything else you'd like to add? Not that I can think of. Any, any retractions about CrossFit? No, I'm going to keep that. It's okay. I'm okay with that stance yet. Are you? <laughs> you know there's going to be an arm wrestling contest in this chamber in about a week when you meet the... That's okay. I'll prepare for it. Yeah. Yes, sir. Oh, Alderman Ruby. All Thank yours. you. Uh, Hunter, I just wanted to let you know I am also a Central High School alum. I don't meet very many of them around Geneva, but... <laughs> Look at that. I, I'm just a couple years ahead of you, so <laughs> I don't think we ever had class together. <laughs> and my dad also is a class of 1953 Central alum. Wow. It's a little bit ahead of me, yeah. Yeah, it's a little bit ahead of me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and actually, Alderman Ruby well, started on the football team. Oh, yeah? yeah oh, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> Would you permit me to uh, administer the oath? Yes. And invite whoever you'd like to join you? You know, I thought about it, but the agenda said the other way, so. And I don't, this got to be it, right? Just Erica's? No, she's not being sworn in. She's already been sworn in. That's right. She was ice warring. Okay, Officer Bolger. Is that your sister seated to your right? That is my sister. You using the phone illegally? Would you like to introduce your family who's with you tonight? Absolutely. I've got my sister, Jackie. Hi, Jackie. I got my dad, Ron. I got my nana, Joanne. And then I got my mom a beer. Now, I was talking with mom earlier, mm -hmm. and your mom's first name is Abir. Yeah. And it's Middle Eastern. It is a, really a cool name. It is. It really is beautiful. Do you know what the name means? Oh, I have no idea. I do. It's a scent of a flower. Oh, that's really nice. A scent of a flower. Very nice. Okay, Jackie, illegal phone use, Dad <laughs> coffee with nothing in it, Nana likes it with cream. Holy moly. Now, it says here, I have a fur baby named Sig. I do. Now, 
forgive me for asking, what is a fur baby? It's a dog. <laughs> ah. Okay, then. <laughs> what kind of dog is it, officer? It is a Chihuahua poodle. It's a real tiny thing. A, ch <laughs> a Chihuahua. This is a family show, officer. It's a Chihuahua poodle. poodle. And is this something you purchased knowing what it was, or was it just a Absolutely. <laughs> like on an end cap somewhere in like nope. Target? No, I won in knowingly. Really? Yeah. May I ask where you, where you found this dog? Uh, from Puppies in St. Charles. Oh, sure. Yeah. Wow. Hmm. <laughs> and why Sig? Uh, I named him after my gun. <laughs> officer Bolger, ladies and gentlemen, became a police officer in the city of Geneva on March 16, 2020. The day after, we closed down the city. Yeah. <laughs> it, it begs the question, what has this first year been like? Very interesting. Uh, spent my first four months uh, doing a lot of odd jobs, yeah. um, and then finally got into the police academy. No kidding. Wow. Yeah. I just finished uh, FTO a week ago. Really? So, almost a year in. And FTO is field training yeah, officer. Yep. And what do they teach you at FTO? Um, just the trades of being an officer. Yeah. You know, just everything from start to finish. Interesting. Is there a, is there a mascot for FTO? Is it like a cross between a poodle and a... <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't say uh, that. Uh, there is no uh, mascot for it, though. There is no mascot, right? <laughs> We met your sister, Jacqueline. Yes. And you go by Jacqueline, Jacqueline, or is it Jackie? Jackie. Jackie it is. There you go. <laughs> Born and raised in beautiful Bartlett, Illinois. Absolutely. Now, do you folks know each other? No. No? No. <laughs> Say hello. <laughs> How's it going? <laughs> How's it going? I attended and graduated from Bartlett High School. Mm -hmm. So Bartlett High School. That's a good sized school. Yeah. What was yeah. your graduating class? How many students? Uh, I believe 900. 900 in the yeah. graduating class? Good Lord. And what was your, what was your, how did you spend your time? I was a theater geek. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. What was your favorite performance? Um, probably Seussical. It was one, one of my younger ones. Seussical the musical, so like Horton Hears a Who. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, doctor, of course. Dr. Seuss, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Holy moly. What, what role did you play? I was a who. You, you were a who? Yep. Who from Whoville. My goodness. Do you prefer... <laughs> what, what was that? Do you prefer drama over comedy, or do you prefer... Um, I like them both. Do you still perform? I do not. You do not? Not anymore. Have you, did you think about perhaps making that a career? No. No, I just did it for fun. Did. Okay. We all do. <laughs> what else did you do besides being a theater geek? And that's a term of endearment because I was too a theater geek. So. That's awesome. Um, besides that, I just spent a lot of time with family at home. Um, did you work? I did work. Where did you work? I worked at Mariano's as a cashier. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. yeah at Hoffman wow. Estates. Now, who was the cashier at Jewel? Was it Matt or Hunter? Hunter. Yeah. Look at that work. <laughs> it's apparently a qualification for a police officer in Geneva. <laughs> awesome, man. I graduated from Elgin Community College with my Associates of Applied Science in Criminal Justice and from Columbia College with my Bachelor's of Arts in Criminal Justice Administration. Mm -hmm. Did you live downtown when you attended Columbia? No, so it was Columbia College of Missouri. Oh, it was. It was. I was uh, just going to ask Yeah, that. it was a sister college, so I was still I, inside Elgin. I know it well. Yeah. Yeah. So you lived in Columbia, Missouri. No. <laughs> you did just all online? Yeah, so it was, uh, so they had in-class uh, classes, but they were um, in Elgin or Crystal Lake. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Have you ever been to Columbia, Missouri? I have not. Lovely town. Yeah? Oh, yeah, beautiful. The home of the University of Missouri. This is going to be a long night. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoy physical fitness. What kind of, this is a loaded question. Yeah, you know, definitely CrossFit. <laughs> um, it's one of my favorites. <laughs> definitely CrossFit. 
Uh, what about hunting and fishing? Uh, I do not do any of those. Okay, okay. But it says here you like traveling. I do. Um, describe what sort of travel you enjoy. Uh, one of my favorite places to go is Mexico. Really? Uh, I go with my family almost every year. Why um, is that? It's just a beautiful place, beautiful people. Yeah. Uh, it's just a really nice getaway. Uh, besides that, in the States, I like going to Nashville. Actually, I just came back from Nashville. No kidding. Yeah. Are you a country music fan then? I am. Is that the only kind of music you listen to? No, no. no? no I like everything. Um, I just actually recently became a country music fan. I used to hate it. They used to love it. Well, hold on. It made so, me like it. So mom and dad oh, yep. converted you? Yeah. Interesting. What about Nana? Nana, do you like, do you like country? All right. <laughs> Nashville's had some tough times of late, haven't they? It has. How's the city doing? It's all right. Good. Yeah, they're doing good. Good. I asked the gentleman, and of course the question's the same for you, why police work? Uh, I've wanted to be an officer since I was a kid. Um, my grandfather was a Chicago police officer. No Sadly, kidding. he passed away in October, so he couldn't be here today. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. Um, but he was the reason that I'm standing here right now. Um, That's sweet. You know, it's something I've always wanted to do. What district was your grandfather in? Uh, I'm not sure. What district was he in? He was in, in uh, District 25, his area 5. Wow. Brandon Central. And how long was he an officer? 32 years. Is that right? Yeah. I'm sorry for your loss. Wow. Grandpa's influence was obviously immeasurable. Absolutely. And it continues to inspire you today. Yep. What else motivates you to do this kind of work? Uh, I just love to help people. You it's do. kind of one of the things I've been doing since I was younger, whether it was just you know helping out small, volunteering. Yeah. Um, it's just something I really enjoy. Now, you're a veteran compared <laughs> to these two gentlemen. Yeah. Um, what advice do you have for those seeking this kind of work or even considering this kind of work? Uh, it's, it's a great place to be. I know a lot of people don't think that uh, with everything that's going on right now, um, but it's truly like a family, especially in this department. Um, everybody's like your family. Uh, the town's amazing. The people are amazing. It's a great place to be. And how do you as a uh, officer, and I'll ask you this, these gentlemen this in a year as well, how do you, how do you unwind after a particularly tough day? Um, you know, I, I kind of go by my dad, to be honest. Yep. I'll hang out with my father. Uh, we'll either go shooting, get something to eat, anything like that. That's kind of the person I'll go to and wine with. That's, that's nice. That's very nice. Any questions or comments for Officer Bolger? Anything else you'd like to share with us? No, thank you very much for having me. It's, uh, you know, I'm really happy I got to do this. I'm really happy my family got to see this. Oh, absolutely. It's, so I really appreciate we're delighted. it. And, um, can we get a picture as well? Absolutely, I, yeah. And then, and then we'll go get one at CrossFit if, they, if we could. Yeah, of course. Okay. Hunter and Matt, Officer Bolger, uh, you are, of course, free to depart because I'm sure you have some fun plan for the evening. I do need to ask your permission. Would you mind terribly if I tweeted out, Instagrammed, or otherwise sold the photos? That's a joke, Hunter. You're good? Matt, you're good as well? Officer Bolger? Excellent. With that, I know you're heading to Mariano's for free food. <laughs> Thank you all very much, and thank you for choosing Geneva. We're delighted to be with you, and thank you for being part of our team. Thank you. Thank you.
Yeah, no kidding. Way to go, Kevin. That's just... Item 3C, ladies and gentlemen, is to proclaim March as Women's History Month in the city of Geneva. Is there a motion? Second. Motion by Alderman Kosserog, seconded by Alderman McGowan. Madam Recording Secretary, please take the roll. Kosserog? Aye. Marks? Marks, aye. McGowan? Aye. Swanson? Aye. Bruno? Bruno, aye. Burkhart? Burkhart, aye. Ruby? Ruby, aye. Caven? Aye. Hilberg? Hilberg, aye. The motion passes with nine affirmative votes, zero nay votes, and one absent. We move down to item number four, amendments to the agenda. Are there any amendments to be offered this evening by members of the city council? We'll do it on the next one. Item five is the omnibus agenda. All items marked with an asterisk are considered to be routine by this council and can be considered and voted upon with one motion. Alderman Swanson, you have a point? Uh, Mayor, I'd like to remove item 11B from the uh, consent agenda, please. Item 11B has been removed off the consent agenda by Alderman Swanson. Anyone else? No. A motion to approve the consent agenda as amended. Madam Recording Secretary. I don't, do have, a, I don't have a motion. Oh, do we have a motion to approve? <laughs> yeah, I was going to ask that. Right. Oh, yeah. A Would motion you? to approve the consent agenda as amended. Alderman Bruno. Is there a Bruno second? Bruno so moves. Second. Second by Alderman Swanson. With that, Madam Recording Secretary. Marks. Marks, aye. McGowan. Aye. Swanson. Aye. Bruno? Bruno, aye. Burkhart? Burkhart, aye. Ruby? Ruby, aye. Caven? Aye. Kilberg? Kilberg, aye. Kosserog? Aye. Motion passes, ladies and gentlemen, with nine affirmative votes, zero nay votes, and one absent. We jump to item number nine. Correction, item number 10, municipal bills for payment. We kindly ask Ms. Dawkins to please read their bills, the bills in their aggregate for our consideration. Uh, total bills for payment are $1,428,664.02. Bruno moves that we approve and pay the bills as read. The individual items that add up to that amount can be found in tonight's city council packet on the city website. The motion has been made by Alderman Bruno to pay the bills as presented, which are also available on the city's website and in each council member's packet. Is there a second to that motion? Seconded by Alderman Swanson. Any questions or comments regarding the bills as presented? If not, Ms. Dawkins? McGowan? Aye. Swanson? Aye. Bruno? Bruno, aye. Burghardt? Burghardt, aye. Ruby? Ruby, aye. Caven? Aye. Kilberg? Kilberg, aye. Kosserog? Aye. Marks? Marks, aye. The motion passes to pay the bills as presented with nine affirmative votes, zero nay votes, and one absent. Under Committee of the Whole Items of Business, we're going to jump to item 11B as in boy to approve resolution number 21, excuse me, 2021-06, authorizing the purchase of a Pierce Enforcer fire truck from McQueen Emergency Group through the HGAC Consortium in an amount not to exceed $1,200,000. Uh, with respect to the information you presented, do you want the motion first or do you want motion, please? Bruno so moves. Alderman McGowan makes the motion. Alderman Bruno makes the second. With that, Ms. Dawkins? Sure. Um, so we had requested that this item be pulled from the consent as the city attorney had requested a slight amendment to the resolution. In re researching various financing options, it appears that a lease to purchase option may have the most favorable terms. As such, the city attorney has recommended additional language to the resolution that you saw at the Committee of the Whole meeting to now uh, to include a lease purchase option. The resolution this evening authorizes staff to proceed with ordering the vehicle, which locks in the price. Any final decision regarding financing, including either a traditional loan or a lease to purchase finance option, will be brought to the City Council for consideration at a future Committee of the Whole meeting, which we do anticipate to be on March 15, 2021. 
So again, it was a very minor change, but since it was on the consent, I wanted to make sure everybody was aware of the change. So instead of it says authorized to purchase, it now says authorized to purchase or lease with a purchase option. But other than that, nothing else has changed. Any other questions or comments for the city administrator prior to taking the roll call? Seeing none and sensing none, whenever you're ready, Ms. Dawkins, please take the roll. Swanson? Aye. Bruno? Bruno, aye. Burkhart? Burkhart, aye. Ruby? Ruby, aye. Caven? Aye. Kilberg? Kilberg, aye. Kosserog? Aye. Marks? Marks, aye. McGowan? Aye. Item 11B has been adopted with nine affirmative votes, zero nay votes, and one absent. Item 12A, ladies and gentlemen, consider ordinance number 2021-04, amending title four, chapter two, liquor control, adding one class B3 liquor license, restaurant with cocktail lounge, one class F1 liquor license, catering liquor, and one class A5 specialty package liquor sale for restaurants for the Third Street Banquets LLC doing business as the Copper Fox, located at 477 South Third Street, contingent and compliance and compliant with all building and safety code inspections and payment of fees. Is there a motion? So moved. Alderman Caven makes the motion. Bruno seconds. Alderman Bruno makes the second. Any questions or comments for the city administrator or myself? I've been uh, corresponding with and been in contact with as late as this afternoon with Mr. Gulbro, Casey Gulbro. They have passed all inspections and are awaiting the final inspection of plumbing tomorrow. Yes, sir. I was just kind of curious what a A5 specialty package liquor sale for restaurants means. I'm going to look it up so I don't speak wrong, but I believe it's so that they can sell like wine to go exactly. when they do like a wine tasting. If there's a bottle somebody likes, they can then okay. sell that bottle and yeah, and to short, go. Yep. Gotcha. And short. Misha has so. one as well and yeah. others do, yeah. You can okay, literally gotcha. buy the so, product yeah. there to take it home. Gotcha. Thank you. Huh? Anyone else? Questions or comments regarding this item, 12A? Alderman Bruno. Thank you, Mayor. Is there a representative from the business in the audience tonight? There is not. Uh, Mr. Goldbro is uh, hosting guests this evening at Foxfire, but I did advise him that if there were any specific questions, I would be happy to relay them to him. Oh, I just like giving the owners of the new businesses an opportunity to tell us about their business. Thanks. Of course. Anyone else? This is on the city council agenda, ladies and gentlemen. We will advise Mr. Goldbro of the vote this evening. And based on what we anticipate to be a final and positive inspection tomorrow from the plumbers, Mr. Gulber will likely be visiting with our office tomorrow to secure the license, pay the fees, and then secure the state license. So with that, a vote's in order. Roll Bru call, excuse me. Bruno? Bruno, aye. Burkhart? Burkhart, aye. Ruby? Ruby, aye. Caven? Aye. Kilberg? Over, guy. Kosserog? Aye. Marks? Mark's aye. McGowan? Aye. Swanson? Aye. The motion passes, ladies and gentlemen, with nine affirmative votes, zero nay votes, and one absent. New business, ladies and gentlemen. I'll first ask our friend Mr. McCready if there's anyone joining us remotely who wishes to speak. There's no one online with their hand raised at this time. I'll ask Ms. Dawkins if there's been any correspondence received that should be. No correspondence entered. received. Okay. From the dais, city council members, any new business for the benefit of the body and community? Seeing none and sensing none, a motion to adjourn would be in order. Alderman Kosserog makes that motion. A roll call vote is necessary. Ms. Dawkins, whenever you're ready. Burkhart. Burkhart, aye. Ruby? Ruby, aye. Caven? Aye. Kilberg? Kilberg, aye. Kosserog? Aye. Marks? Marks, aye. McGowan? Aye. Swanson? Aye. Bruno? Bruno, aye. 
This meeting of the City Council of the City of Geneva is adjourned. You just give us a few moments and we'll transition over to the Committee of the Whole. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, tonight's Committee of the Whole meeting is called to order. I kindly ask our City Administrator to please take the roll call. Bruno. Bruno here. Burkhart. Burkhart here. Ruby. Ruby here. Caven. Here. Kilberg. Kilberg here. Kasarog. Here. Maladra. Marks. Marks here. McGowan. Here. Swanson. Here. Ladies and gentlemen, before jumping into business during this evening's Committee of the Whole, I would like to uh, share with many of you, and obviously I think most of you already know, uh, Tara sent me a very sweet note not long ago regarding the passing of a, a good friend of all of ours and a good friend of Geneva, Cheris Wheeler. Uh, last night there was a memorial service for Cheris via Zoom, and her son, who lives on the eastern seaboard, conducted the ceremony. There were well over 45 people participating. Many of them shared stories. For those of you who aren't aware, uh, I did ask her son, Eric, if we could begin tonight's meeting with a moment of silence. And I want to just read a little bit of the obituary that Eric helped fashion. Sheris Freeman Wheeler, 98, of Geneva, died on Wednesday, February the 3rd, at home with family, friends, and of course her caregiver. Sheris was born on July 25, 1922, in Racine, Wisconsin. She attended Earlham College in Indiana, where she earned a Bachelor of Arts degree in philosophy and history, graduating in 1944. She married Haynes Jefferson Wheeler of Geneva, Illinois in 1947. They had three sons, Eric, Tim, and David. She later earned her MLS degree from the University of Northern Illinois DeKalb and worked for many years, and some of you may remember her, as a reference librarian at the St. Charles Public Library. In recent years, she became a certified student of the basic program offered by the University of Chicago. Sherris lived her entire adult life in her beloved city of Geneva, where she cultivated an active civic, cultural, and social life. A true Renaissance woman, her intelligence, her curiosity, and joie de vivre, that's French for joy of life, distinguished her throughout her long life. To her friends and family, near and far, she is sorely missed, but will long be remembered. Uh, I know our colleague, Alderman Berghardt, had the pleasure of lunching with Cherise shortly after you moved to Geneva. Um, so obviously, Alderman Berghardt, the floor is yours. Oh, sure, yeah. After, uh, shortly after I got elected to the city council, she invited oh, me mean? to uh, have lunch with her and. Um, yeah gave me a tour of her lovely, very tastefully done uh, place at Kempsey Court and uh, kind of shared a lot of the history in Geneva that she knew um, uh, with me. Uh, we, I think, spent about six hours together. <laughs> we, well, that's where I dropped her off and we were still in the car talking and, you know, here's this woman, a whole different, you know, generation, really my grandmother's generation, and yet was just as um, smart and with it and, uh, interested in life and interested in current events um, as anyone. And so it's kind of appropriate that we're um, thinking of her at the start of Women's History Month. I mean, she right. uh, really spanned much of the last century and, and so uh, women's rights and uh, women's issues, um, you know, really uh, come to the forefront. So um, I'm sorry that I've lost my friend, but what a great um, contribution she gave to the city of Geneva and uh, and just the small part of that she shared with me. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you very much, well said. Anyone else? Alderman Bruno, I know you were good friends with Sherry's, Sherry's excuse me. Uh, yes, it's, it saddens me that I missed the, uh, the announcement of the uh, memorial service I would have, uh, I was really hoping to attend. But uh, I met Sher uh, Sheris Wheeler uh, through Geneva Learners Discussion Group initially. Um, sharp as a tack, uh, very committed to the community and uh, social justice. Um, she'll, be, she'll be greatly missed, but as uh, Alderman, Alderman Burkhart referred, she, uh, she left a great legacy. Thank you. Absolutely. 
Without objection, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Sheriff Wheeler, and certainly on behalf of her son Eric and all her friends and her grandchildren and her great-grandchildren, if uh, we could just offer a collective moment of silence to honor the extraordinary life of a good friend of our communities. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll entertain a motion to approve special committee of the whole minutes from January 25, 2021, and the regular committee of the whole minutes from February 16, 2021. Is there a motion? Bruno so moves. Alderman Bruno makes the motion. Second. Alderman Swanson makes the second. Whenever you're ready, Ms. Dawkins, please take the roll. Ruby? Ruby, aye. Caven? Aye. Kilberg? Kilberg, aye. Kosserog? Aye. Marks? Marks, aye. McGowan? Aye. Swanson? Aye. Bruno? Bruno, aye. Burghardt? Burghardt, aye. Item number two has been approved with nine affirmative votes, zero nay votes, and one absent. On to the items of business under item three. 3A is to consider draft resolution authorizing the purchase of a 2021 combination sewer cleaning truck with JetVac Environmental through the SourceWell Cooperative Purchasing Program at a price not to exceed $441,807.12. Is there a motion? Kostrog so moves. Alderman Kostrog makes the motion. Is there a second? Mm -hmm. Bruno seconds. Alderman Bruno seconds that. Ms. Dawkins. Okay, so the fiscal year 2022 budget has contemplated the replacement of a 2008 combination sewer cleaning truck due to the years in service and the number of repairs made to the vehicle on an annual basis. The truck is primarily used to clean storm and sanitary sewer on a preventative and emergency basis, but is also used for hydro excavating when excavating by backhoe is difficult and dangerous due to multiple utilities in the area. Because of the current availability of a chassis and a long lead time for the build out of the truck, staff is requesting approval to purchase the truck so the build out may begin. Payment will not be made until after delivery of the truck, which we anticipate to be several months in the future, hopefully still during fiscal year 2022. Uh, the resolution also declares a surplus the 2008 combination sewer cleaning truck, which will be traded in as part of the total contract. The cooperative purchasing agreement with SourceWell is being used for the purchase of the truck. Uh, we do have Superintendent Landers with us virtually this evening to answer any additional questions you may have. Are there any questions or comments for, excuse me, questions for Superintendent Landers who is joining us virtually? Seeing none. Sensing none. Ms. Dawkins, please take the roll. Caven. Aye. Kilberg? Kilberg, aye. Kostrog? Aye. Marks? Marks, aye. McGowan? Aye. Swanson? Aye. Bruno? Bruno, aye. Burkhart? Burkhart, aye. Ruby? Ruby, aye. We got everybody? Yeah. With nine affirmative votes, zero nay votes, and zero, or excuse me, and one absent, item 3A has been advanced to the City Council for additional consideration and final adoption. Item 3B, consider draft resolution, waiving competitive bidding and authorizing a contract with Metropolitan Pump Company at a cost not to exceed $75,658 to purchase a repair lift station pumps. Is there a motion? Alderman Swanson no. makes the motion. Alderman Burghardt makes the second. Ms. Dawkins. Okay. Uh, so the lift station for the Fisher Farm subdivision, Geneva East subdivision, and Kelts Road have each had a pump fail and were sent to the manufacturer for diagnosis. Uh, there is a memorandum in the packet this evening that outlines the recommendations for either replacement and or repairs utilizing Metropolitan Industries of Romeoville in the amount not to exceed $75,658. As there are only two suppliers of pumps used with, within the sanitary collection system, of which 75% are serviced by Metropolitan Industries, 
The request is to waive competitive bidding. As such, the resolution will require seven affirmative votes for passage. Uh, we do have Superintendent Van Gescom here uh, to answer any questions you might have. Thank you, Stephanie. Questions for the superintendent, Mr. Bob Van Gescom? Seeing none virtually or sensing none, anyone in the chamber? Anyone remotely? Mr. Nelson, you are raising your hand at this time. I will unmute you if you have a public comment to make regarding this item. And you've been unmuted on our end, so you are welcome to unmute if you wish to make public comment regarding the current item, Mr. Nelson. I'm sorry, the current item being? Item 3B. I was going, I meant to comment at the end of the meeting. Can I defer till then? Of course. Thank Absol you. Absolutely. No questions from the Committee of the Whole? Ms. Dawkins, please take the roll call. Kilberg? Gilbert Guy. Kosrog? Aye. Marks? Marks, aye. McGowan? Aye. Swanson? Aye. Bruno? Bruno, aye. Burkhart? Burkhart, aye. Ruby? Ruby, aye. Caven? Aye. Item 3B has been advanced to the City Council for additional consideration. With nine affirmative votes, zero nay votes, and one absent. Item 3C is to consider draft resolution authorizing Illinois Department of Transportation right of way maintenance agreement with the state of Illinois. Is there a motion? Bruno so moves. Alderman Bruno makes the motion. Alderman Kosserog seconds that motion. Ms. Dawkins? So the Illinois statute requires anyone doing work within the state right-of-way to obtain a permit from IDOT, including emergency repairs to utilities. It also requires a surety bond to ensure the work is done per state standards and the right-of-way is properly restored. For municipalities doing work in the state right-of-way, the state will accept a resolution in lieu of the surety bond. So the resolution under consideration this evening is a two-year resolution to satisfy the state's requirements in lieu of providing a surety bond for municipal work in the state right-of-way. Um, and we still have uh, Superintendent Landers here for any questions. Questions for Superintendent Landers. Seeing none and sensing none, Ms. Dawkins, please take the roll call. Marks? Marks, aye. McGowan? Aye. Swanson? Aye. Bruno? Bruno, aye. Burkhart? Burkhart, aye. Ruby? Ruby, aye. Caven? Aye. Kilberg? Kilberg, aye. Kosrog? Aye. Item 3C has been advanced to the City Council for additional consideration with a vote of nine in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and one absent. Item 3D, consider draft resolution authorizing the establishment of the Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Task Force. Is there a motion to so? Alderman Bruno McGowan so makes the motion. Is there a second? Second. Second by Alderwoman Ruby. Ruby. Thank you. Ms. Dawkins, then we have, a, I believe, a guest with us this evening as well. So upon adoption of the 2025 Strategic Plan in 2018, the City's Strategic Plan Advisory Committee began to research efforts by other communities to establish work groups focused on issues of diversity, equity, and inclusion. The City Council provided some additional feedback incorporated into the recommendations that are presented this evening at a Joint Committee of the Whole meeting with SPAC in October of 2020. In alignment with the plan's goals and update presented at the City Council meeting on February 16, 2021, SPAC is recommending the establishment of a task force, as described in the packet, to develop recommendations pertaining to enhancing a sense of diversity, equity, and inclusion. Uh, this evening with us, we do have Jill Johnson, the chair of SPAC, and also Ben McCready, the staff liaison, um, are both here to answer any additional questions you may have. The floor is open to questions or comments for either SPAC Chairwoman Johnson or Ms. Uh, Assistant City Administrator McCready. Anyone at all? Seeing none virtually, seeing none in the chamber, a 
roll call vote will be in order to pass this resolution. Whenever you're ready. Oh, sorry. Kasserog? Aye. Marks? Marks, aye. McGowan? Aye. Swanson? Aye. Bruno? Bruno, aye. Burkhart? Burkhart, aye. Ruby? Ruby, aye. Caven? Aye. Hilbert? Hilbert, aye. Item 3D, ladies and gentlemen, has been advanced to the City Council with nine affirmative votes, zero nay votes, and one absent. Item 3E, consider draft resolution adopting updates to the 2025 strategic plan document. Is there a motion? Move. Alderman Kosserog makes the motion. Is there a second to that motion? Alderman Burkhart makes the second. This matter is on the floor. Ms. Dawkins? Okay, so the Strategic Plan Advisory Committee and staff recommend the City Council adopt the proposed updates to the City's 2025 Strategic Plan. The updates reflect the Council's established priorities and modifications as identified at the 2020 Strategic Plan Workshop held in November, as well as the completion of existing and the addition of new action items identified in the budget process. The plan continues to be a dynamic and living document that acknowledges accomplishments, changes to operations and reporting, community input and priorities as reviewed by SPAC and approved by the City Council. Um, and again, we have Jill Johnson, the SPAC chair, and also the staff liaison, Ben McCready, who are both here to answer any questions you may have. From the committee, questions or comments for Chairwoman Johnson or Assistant City Administrator McCready? Alderman Swanson. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I wanted to thank uh, the SPAC uh, committee for, uh, for updating this. I do have one question on the economic vitality page. On objection, objective number one, there's a new action item, and it's the last one to identify properties that may be developed or redeveloped in support of housing opportunities. And I'd just like to know, uh, number one, who is going to be responsible for doing this? And then what exactly is the objective here in creating this uh, list of identified properties? And, and a little background, we've, we've come across this before, particularly when we had opportunity zones. And I took exception at that time when occupied homes or occupied businesses were included in this redevelopment plan. So I wanted to know if we're going down that same path and how we're going to avoid identifying occupied homes for redevelopment. If I may comment to that one. Um, so in the strategic plan, as we go down through the different levels of items from visions to outcomes to objectives, as you know, many of the action items are oftentimes what staff is closest to. So, this was one that came out of the strategic planning session um, that City Council had mentioned back in November of 2020. Um, and I believe the intent behind this is, as you would know, there would be more than one department that obviously play a role in this, obviously working with the city administrator. Um, there are goals, there are work items um, associated with the community development department that would pertain to this. And so again, it becomes an action item where as as that department works through opportunities or anything that may be presented to it, that that would be, um, you know, really fall within their realm as far as the final deliverable of what that looked like to city council. But I think the points that you've made about um, identifying properties that are occupied um, have been addressed before as far as um, I think staff's aware of the concerns related to that. So it, it sounds like you're saying we're, we're not going to repeat those situations in the past where we have identified properties without the permission of the current owners. So we're gonna factor in a, an approval process, if you will, before such maps or lists are published. Is that correct? Just to be clear, those, those specific items aren't enumerated in, in there, but I think between the city administrator and myself, we can pass that, pass that on to the departments as they work on this. Okay, I'd, I'd appreciate that. And just so that we're, we're cognizant of that and, and we, we tread lightly when we go down those paths. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else from the committee? 
Questions or comments for Chairwoman Johnson? Mr. McCready, Alderman Kosserock? Uh, not about the the updates themselves, but um, given the importance that we we've been placing on the strategic plan, I was wondering if there was a way to uh, maybe do the text alerts or the email alerts when the plan is updated, that anybody signed up for those alerts can say, uh, you know, the strategic plan has been updated, kind of like I'm thinking we do with um, with any development plan. You get a text, hey, the develop this development has been updated. Please. Uh, you know, check it out if you want to. Um, I just think that communication uh, with the citizens of Geneva might be important for them to know and give them an opportunity to check it out. Yeah. That can be done. Thank you. You're welcome. Anyone else? Yes, Hold on. <laughs> excuse me. <laughs> Thank you. I had a question about one of the new action items that was added under environmental stewardship. Um, and in objective three, where it talks about implementing initiatives to protect the Fox River and preserve groundwater resources, I was just curious um, what the connection is with expanding the anti-icing program through expanded storage capacity. I just don't know what that is. I wanted a little more info. Yeah. So the reason we do anti-icing, which is what you know that we put on the streets in advance of a rainstorm, is so that we use less salt. Salt ultimately runs off and into the river, and that's, that's what we're trying to avoid. So by expanding our anti-icing program, we're using less salt and sand when there's actually a snow event. So that's one of the best practices. Got it. Okay, that makes sense. I just I just wasn't clear. I wanted to make sure I understood what that was. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and then I also just wanted to um, express my appreciation um, to SPAC and everyone who's worked on the um, the edits and the updates um, to the strategic plan. And I I really like a lot of the action items that have been added. And it's nice to see. Some of the things that we've talked about and discussed over time now physically present in our and written out in our strategic plan. So um, in particular, I'm trying to scroll down. I, I really liked the mention of um, uh, something about a social worker being part of the police department um, being mentioned in there and um, you know a few other things as well. So again, thanks for um, I'm, I'm glad to see all of this. It's, it's kind of like you can see the progression of the city, and, and it's nice to see. So thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Anyone else from the dais? Anyone else virtually? Anyone else online who wishes to address this particular issue? Mayor, if I may, I just... Um wanted to thank Jill. Jill is joining us virtually tonight. She was available via audio. So I want to thank her for her time. And again, think of, thanks SPAC, who I think many of them are, are tuned in here for oh, this good. item and the previous this evening. Is your microphone on? Uh, it should be, sorry. I just want to thank SPAC, who's tuned in this evening. Um, they've spent several meetings, um, you know, really taking this, this, these assignments thoughtfully and are happy to present these items this evening. Thank you. Thank you. A roll call would be in order, ladies and gentlemen. Ms. Dawkins, whenever you're ready. McGowan? Aye. Swanson? Aye. Bruno? Bruno, aye. Burkhart? Burkhart, aye. Ruby? Ruby, aye. Caven? Aye. Kilberg? Kilberg, aye. Kosrog? Aye. Marks? Marks, aye. Item 3E has been adopted for recommendation to be ad advanced to the City Council meeting with nine affirmative votes, zero nay votes, and one absent. Ladies and gentlemen, that brings us to new business. Mr. McCready, is there anyone joining us online who wishes to address the committee? We do have Mr. Rodney Nelson who has his hand raised. Yeah. And if we are prepared, I can unmute his microphone. Yes. Thank you. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, sir. I wanted to, I kind of saved this for the end and I'll try to be brief, but I wanted to address the 1-4-dioxane 
uh, item on the previous agenda. Um, I don't want to say this is a big deal, but it's, it, it is a pretty huge deal. 1,4-dioxane is what's called a forever chemical. Uh, some people recognize perk and poly, the alkyls that um, go into making uh, stainless clothes and fire foam and things like that. They're the better known forever chemicals. They're called that because they stay in the, in the environment virtually forever. And in fact, they can, some of them can bioaccumulate. Fortunately, dioxane doesn't do that, but can still accumulate, for example, in a Schaefer system such as we have west of town, if you use the groundwater uh, that's been contaminated by these forever chemicals, and then you spray them on the ground, they percolate back down into the groundwater, and in a sense, you, you distill it so that you get increasing amounts um, returning to, to that aquifer. Uh, so I, I, I feel like this has been a failure of my generation. I spent a lot of years trying to get Settlers Hill landfill closed, finally accomplished it, but too late. And I, I think you should take grave notice of the presence of dioxane. It's sort of like the uh, Japanese fable that you're sitting on the beach on a nice day and all of a sudden the sea goes away, it recedes. That should tell you, turn and run for the hills because there's a tsunami coming. One four dioxane uh, doesn't bind well to soil, so it leaches into groundwater, and it moves fast. So it's the first thing in, in it from a source that's leaking many chemicals, it's the first one you'll see. People have the idea that groundwater runs like a stream. Uh, many of these plumes of contaminants move a few inches a year, um, and some of these plumes are very narrow, they can sneak between monitoring wells. Just a few minutes ago, we heard about uh, an initiative to protect the Fox River. Uh, that landfill is very close to the Fox River. Interestingly, the groundwater flows to the east. You'd think in the valley, it would flow to the west. But because of a lot of other physical issues like colloid chemistry, um, contaminant plumes can actually move up the hydraulic gradient. So uh, the Fox River is not safe. We can't fall asleep at the switch. We have one of the biggest accumulation of toxic chemicals in the state of Illinois in our town. And it's there because of a lack of social justice. There were no NIMBYs in that part of town. There was the Kane County Poor Farm. There was the county jail. There were the women who were incarcerated at the Geneva School for Girls, but there were no NIMBYs. There was nobody that took an interest in, in that real estate, and this is the legacy of that. So we, we need to keep it on the front burner. No, nobody else is going to help us with this. The county, nobody likes to talk about it. Nobody likes to talk about the liability. Waste management has liability, but only for 30 years. That's a very short period of time in the overall scheme of things. So I just wanted to highlight that. Um, and because it also relates to the other things I wanna talk about uh, as briefly as I can, which have something to do also with Geneva's water. Um, I, I'd like to speak to three closely interrelated concepts, all of which I strongly favor. Affordable housing, fiduciary responsibility, and governmental transparency. First on affordable housing, housing you may have heard that there's a movement afoot to build forty-five, four hundred thousand dollar affordable homes out west in Sterling Manor. Sterling Manor is a planned unit development named for a prominent East Side family that included Sam and Lucy Sterling. The former built our first dam and mill, and the latter was our first pool teacher. The East Side also became the site of Geneva's first PUD in the 1950s. Geneva today has a good but imprecisely known number of affordable homes. Many of them are in that first pod called Ridgewood. Ridgewood was built in the same decade as Park Forest and Levittown on Long Island. These were all planned projects created to meet the demands of returning GIs wanting to start families. Today, many Ridgewood homes are in the 
price range of 200 to $250,000. And Ridgewood also encompasses affordable rental apartments, townhomes, and condos. Several years after Ridgewood, Geneva East was res rescued from bankruptcy by Ken Shodin, who built another grouping of innovative and affordable homes. So uh, we should ask, do many of these homes qualify as affordable housing today, or must we build $400,000 affordable homes instead? You proclaim that Geneva is a data-driven organization but the data upon which the 7.7% number, that which is the bogey is based on, is based on a guesstimate from an extrapolation that comes from the American um, community surveys, which are done every five years. 7.7% actually comes from the 2016 ACS, and that data started collecting in 2011. A lot has changed. One of the big things that has changed is in 2016, the mortgage bogey that they used was 3.98% when calculating affordable housing. Today, that number is about half. That The halving of the mortgage rate created a lot of affordable homes in Geneva by HUD standards. But we don't know how many or where they are. It's If you're going to be data-driven, you've got to use the right data. So I, I really beseech you to perform a study and find out where we stand. If we need more, let's recognize that. Even if, even if we meet the criteria, let's look to do a better job. But let's make those affordable homes scattered through the community so they can, we can truly be diversified. By the way, uh, Geneva owes an enormous debt of gratitude to the late Tom Rossiter who built Ridgewood and to Ken Shodin uh, for what they did and what they didn't do. Unlike Mr. Levitt on Long Island, Geneva's builders did not have Clause 25 in their sales and lease agreements. I think we all know who Levitt's cause, Clause 25 shamefully excluded. Mr. Shodin and Mr. Rossiter, whether they knew it or not, emulated Park Forest, where led by the Unitarian Church, Diversity was an early and persisting achievement. Park Forest is a model for the entire country of how to create a, and maintain a d diversified community. They had some advantages. They were on the, on the road from um, the University of Chicago down, uh, out that expressway. It wasn't there, of course, in the 50s. But, and they were also close to Argonne Laboratories. And uh, these things gave them some advantages but Geneva can accomplish the same thing. My second point on fiduciary responsibility. Uh, utility cost is a major factor in housing affordability, and it's included in HUD's defining calculations. The Geneva City Council, that would be you guys, uh, don your hats of utility executives when it comes to the water. We all trust you to not borrow those hats from Commonwealth Edison. The proposed Sterling Manor site was appraised in 2007 by the Coleman Land Company at $1.8 million. That was the high time just before the Great Recession. However, you now have a recent real life appraisal derived by an objective predetermined process. You sold one of the water funds 8.5 acres to the railroad in 2019 for $261,000. That was the least valuable of the 8.5 acres there, the ones, the acre closest to the railroad. So, but using that number and multiplying times 7.5, you come up with $2 million as the value of that property. Now it's more complicated than that. Uh, the appraisal takes into consideration that there's some residue damage from the use of the railroad to the remaining property but suffice to say using the methodology of it, should they come railroad come and ask for another acre they would get more than two hundred and sixty one thousand dollars for that acre i just read that joliet is going dry my first thought was finally modern progressives are emulating the good ideas of the progressives of a hundred years ago they're going to try and react the 19th amendment but then I realized, no, 
you know that uh, Joliet is actually going dry and must spend hundreds of millions of dollars to get lake water, if they can get lake water, as of the Supreme Court ruling of 1938. So what's this got to do with Geneva? Well, we need to be husbanding, uh, husbanding our water resources, including uh, building some reserves for the next event, such as the warning that we're getting from 1,4-dioxin. So please don't treat the water fund as a political slush fund. Let's, let's look at uh, Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Water is very, very close to the top of that triangle. In fact, it's at the top. On transparency, I'm frankly stunned that you knew since May of last year that a current Rutgers database professional estimate of school child yield from your proposed housing project is 35 children. May was two months before your first fact sheet listed the number at 100. And half a year before you revised the 100 error to your second fact sheet and put it at 10 you knew the more credible estimate was 3.5 times higher, and you sharply lowered the school's land cash total due from the development accordingly. 35 children will cost you, the school taxpayers, $750,000 per year, every year, while your project gets an 80% property tax reduction, a fact that's strangely missing from both facts. I implore you, table your right-hearted but wrong-minded project until after open public scrutiny occurs in the post-pandemic's bright sunshine. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else, Mr. McCready, who wishes to chime in on a new business or a public comment, excuse me? No one else raising their hands at this time. Anything to be read into the record with respect to no, sir. Subject line? No, no sir. <clears throat> Anyone else? New business? Welcome to going. Okay, I just have a brief announcement, and that is um, the Geneva High School students are looking for opportunities to complete their give hours, which are their community service hours that they complete. And because of social distancing, it's been a little bit more challenging this year for the students to find um, as many give our opportunities as there have been in the past. So um, I'd like to just mention this, if anyone has any ideas or opportunities to please contact uh, Geneva High School, just call their main office and let them know that you have some ideas for students give hours. The hours need to be completed by, I think towards the end of April. So there is still some time, but um, there are quite a few students looking to finish their give hour requirements and really want to, really do want to complete those requirements and give back to the community. And then finally, um, I did have some students who spent time shoveling snow away from the fire hydrants along the parkways. So I would just like to commend those students for their efforts. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else new business from the committee for the benefit of this body and the community? If not, a motion to adjourn this committee of the whole meeting is in order. So Alderman Kosserog gets the motion. Roll call is necessary, folks. Swanson? Aye. Bruno? Bruno, aye. Burkhart? Burkhart, aye. Ruby? Ruby, aye. Gavin? Aye. Hilberg? Hilberg, aye. Asrog? Aye. Marks? Marks, aye. McGowan? Aye. Thank you, everyone. This committee, the whole meeting is adjourned. Be safe.